There is Regis. Regis, how are you, my friend? I'm good, man. Sorry, we ran a little late, bro. I was doing another one. I was doing the interview just now. Oh, good, man. How are you? Let's. I want to talk about how everything's been and stuff like that. How are you? How is your family doing? Everybody okay? This is a crazy world we're living in with COVID-19. Are you guys all good? Yeah, we all good, bro. Yeah, everybody's good, man. Thankfully, you know, everybody, everybody's, we're fine. We're doing fine, you know, staying away from things, you know, just, just kind of going to the gym and that's it. Well, you're making your PBC debut, and I'll be honest with you. I've, I've seen you for a long, long time. I mean, we were in Montana together when you defeated Julius Ndongo at that casino, and, and you have really continued to make your way up the ranks. But mm -hmm. how excited are you to be making your PBC debut? I'm, I'm very excited, bro. I, I think this, and, and I mean, I know a lot of people, I know you ask these questions to other people, and they say, I'm very excited. I'm really excited about this. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited about this. It's, the, it's a different stage, of, different um chapter in my career right now. And I think this, you know, this um, platform could really blow me up, really what I need, you know. So, I mean, I can't wait, bro. I, I just, I, I can't wait for this fight. I've been training my ass off, you know, but even before the, um, the whole, you know, Corona thing during Corona, I've been training the whole time, you know, so like I said, I can't wait. I can't wait to, you know, go out there and do what I do, get back in the ring, basically. You had a tremendous fight your last time out against Josh Taylor. Many mm -hmm. people thought it was a candidate for fight of the year. What did you learn in that fight? Um, First off, you know, I, I still thought I won the fight, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I still, you know, it's kind of hard. Don't think I, you know, didn't think I won the fight. I still thought I won. The fight, but it was a very, you know, it was a very, very close fight. But, you know, what I learned is just something I learned about myself. You know, I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't I didn't know if I can go to war for 12 rounds. 12 hard, hard rounds. I didn't know if I could do that. You know, I before that, I only had, I only had, previous before that fight, I only had one fight that I went to, um, I did 12 rounds with Terry Flanagan. But that, it yes. wasn't, a, I didn't go to war with him. You know, I just, you know, I, I kind of, I just outboxed him and just, you know, kind of toyed around with him. Not toyed around, I don't want to say it like that. But I just outboxed him. It was slick. With Josh Taylor, we went to war for 12 rounds. We went to war and, you know, I knew it was going to be that type of fight, basically. You know, but the main thing is just like, you know, what I learned about myself is that I, I kind of just fell asleep, man. I, I, fell, I fell asleep in the middle rounds. I gave those middle rounds up. I know what I did. I fell asleep in the middle rounds. And, you know, that's kind of what happened. Regis, I have all the utmost respect for prize fighters, but I want to know for the fans and, and for common people that have never been inside the ring, mm -hmm. how do you fall asleep in the middle rounds? How does that happen? Because it did not seem to us that you fell asleep in the middle rounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I won't, like, fell asleep is just like, I wasn't I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, basically. I kind of just, I maybe, I don't know how it was. It was just like kind of a blur, you know. I just got, kind of got tangled up in maybe the atmosphere or whatever, you know. Um, you're on autopilot mode? Is that a thing? You, I mean, is that possible that you're on autopilot? So, probably so, you know. I, it's just, it was, when I when I say fell asleep, I still was fighting. Because I looked at, I watched the fight, you know. Yeah. I watched it and I watched the middle rounds. And it don't look like I fell asleep. But mentally, I remember, like, I wasn't there. You know, I just, I wasn't there like it was supposed to be, <coughs> excuse me. Um, But because I remember, you know, one of my coaches, he like, after after the one around Josh Taylor had, you know, I think he hit me with some hard punches. And he was like, bro, you, this a lot of hard work, bro. You got to wake up. And that's mm -hmm. kind of when I woke up. That's when I like, you know, because the last three rounds, I really came on strong. And, yeah, of course. So, so, um, and but, like I said, previous to that, it just, I just, like I said, I just fell asleep in the fight. That's all. Well, now fighting with PBC, what was that determination like? Because I know that you were supposed to have a fight with Maurice Hooker. The pandemic postponed that. Mm -hmm. But then I saw that the fight was going to get rescheduled. He wanted to fight then at 147. Can you tell us, from your perspective, how did you end up here? Because I'm very excited to see you fight Juan Araldez. But, you know, how did you end up when it comes to PBC? And what happened with the Hooker fight? Um, The whole uh, – well, the whole Hooker fight, yeah, that's, that's a crazy situation, man. I mean, so – the whole I'll get to the hooker thing first, I guess. Um the whole thing with Hooker was at first we were supposed to fight at one forty. Um yeah. he said no, he can't make one his his team said no that he can't make one forty. They gonna do it at one forty three. It was like, all right, that's fine. We'll do it yeah. at one forty three. That was that was scheduled for April seventeenth. That fight, of course, they got trashed because of Corona, right? Yeah. So then after that, um after that fight then I mean, yeah, after that happened, then, um, you know, we came back and we still, we was trying to get another date. And then he was saying he can't make 143. He want to do it 147. Oh, wow. Me personally, and still right now to this day, 
I'm not going up to 147 right now. I want to be a champion again at 140 before okay. I move up to 147. That's just what I want to do. You know, I'm yeah. keeping into everybody else. Unless, of course, the money is something crazy. Money always changes shit with people. Right? So, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, so, um, so that's what I want. I want to be a champion again at 140 before I move up to 147. So, um, he was, so we was trying to, we, I said, all right, let's do 144. He was like, no, I'm doing 147. But I think he told Dan Raphael he can do it at um, 145. And I think it was just kind of a, a tug of war. I was like, no, I'm not doing 145. I'm going to do 144. He was like, no, I'm not doing 144. Let's do 145. Gotcha. So then it was like that for about a week. And I just, I kind of, I told my man, after I told my man, look, let's do it at 145. Yeah. Um, you know, let's just get the fight. You know, I, I definitely want to get back in the ring. I want to get a fight and stuff like that. Let's do it at 145. Um, he was just like, no, 147. So I think, and I think I read some stuff about it. What he said, he was just like, he, like, I think I'm Floyd Mayweather and I, I have to, I'm negotiating and stuff like that. He, I can't dictate the negotiations. So, you know, I think that was a part of it too, about him dictating the, the, the negotiations and me dictating negotiations and nobody kind of dictated because the whole fight fell out. But anyways, um, I actually, I, I hit him up about it on it. Like he saw, I tagged him in one of my videos or something like that on on Instagram, I talking about him, and he was just like, "Man, you 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 talking too much or something like that." I was like, "Make if you make the weight, I'm gonna show you who talking. Just make yeah. the weight." Okay. And he was like, "I'm at 147. Do you?" And that was it. So he set on going to 147, and I'm not going to 147. You know, and for me, um, I just don't think it's it's not my fault that he's going up a different weight. He couldn't make the weight. Basically, he's a 140 pounder. Now he can't make the weight, so he's going up to 147. So. For me, it wasn't my fault, and I kind of poked at him a little bit. I just got the um, I just did an interview just now because he was saying like I kept talking about him after the fact that, you know, the fight was salvaged. I just I mean I poked at him a little bit because I saw him in training camp jump rope, and he had a stomach way out here. He had a big old <laughs> big old stomach, and so I was like, well, that's why he can't make the weight right now, you know. And that was it. But after that, I just left it alone, man. If the fight not happening, it don't even make sense. You know, I'm I'm not talking about him and stuff like that no more. I, I kind of just left it all alone. So, um, he's at 147. I'm at 140. That's it. End of the end of the story. Well, let's talk about the story that you got coming up on Halloween night, Showtime Bay Per View. Juan Araldez. How do you look at him, and how do you assess what you're dealing with on Halloween night on Showtime Pay Per View? Um, I, I honestly don't think he's he should be on my level. To be honest, you know, I'm former world champion. I feel like, I still feel like I'm the best in the world at 140. Um, I mean, he's I think he's an okay fighter. You know, he's a good okay fighter and stuff like that. But it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter who it is right now because I know he's gonna come. You know, like if if he gets a win against me, he'll be you know in, in line for a title shot. That would be a huge yeah. upset, and he'll be in line for a title shot. So I'm not I'm not putting nothing past nobody. I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at him like he's the fighter he is right now. I'm looking at him like he's a superstar. That's that's the that's the basic that's the way I'm training right now. I'm looking like, you know, I gotta I gotta just go out there and dominate. And I I have to you know have to put on a spectacular performance, you know, um because I can't look at it like he's the fighter he is right now. Like I said, I'm looking at it like he's, you know, ten times better than what he is, and that's that's the way I'm training. That's the way I'm living my life right now. So. I just want to go out there and, you know, um, do my thing and have a, a dominant performance. And that's that's how I, that's what I want to do. Late last week, it was announced that fans are going to be in attendance mm -hmm. at the Alamo Dome. Tickets went on sale yesterday. They've gotten a very favorable response. I'm hearing over 12,000 in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that going to be like for you fighting in front of fans again? I mean, well, I, I didn't. I haven't experienced the no fans thing, you know, so it'll oh, be normal. You know what, you're right. I, I had, you know, I fought, my last fight was at the O2 in front of 20,000 people, you know, so it's it'll be the same thing for me, you know. Um, I haven't fought in front of the, the no fans thing right now, so I think I, I think it's kind of a good thing. I kind of, honestly, I didn't really want to fight in front of no fans. I mean, yeah. it'll kind of feel like a spar match, you know, like no fans and It'll feel like a glorified spar match to me, you know. So I wanted to fight in front of fans. The fans, the fans make the sport, you know. The fans make it basically make the event. So um, I, I, I kind of didn't want to do that anyway. And I'm now, you know, I'm glad. And this is a, this is a historic fight. I'm, I'm kind of glad it happened like this because this is the first fight um, where they're gonna have fans. And yeah, BBC's got fans for the first time. I mean, I'm, I think we're all excited. You are as well. 
Right, exactly. I'm definitely excited about that, man. You know, so at first it was it was thought to be, you know, nobody gonna have no fans. We can't do this. We can't do that. Now we gonna have fans and again. So I mean, PBC, you know, PBC doing their thing. You know, having the fans and stuff like that. Cause that's that's kind of what makes the event. Not not the fight. I said the fight, but no, nah, it doesn't make the fight. But that's what makes the event special. Having the fans and they're yelling and screaming. And you know, that's I'm glad.